I'm in Somerville and in this video I want to talk about an aircraft accident which happened at Warsaw Airport in 1993 and in which software was implicated as a cause of that accident but where the software behaved exactly as specified. What happened was that a, a Lufthansa Airbus on a flight from Frankfurt to Warsaw landed in bad weather at the air, at Warsaw Airport. On landing, the pilots <coughs> activated the computer control braking system, but nothing happened. The system did not deploy until nine seconds after the aircraft touched down. Unfortunately, by that time, the plane was so far along the runway that it was impossible to stop before the end of the runway. The plane hit a grass bank at the end of the runway and two people were killed and 54 people were injured. As with all accidents, or almost all accidents, the causes of this accident were not simple. There wasn't a single cause that caused the, the accident to happen. There were three main contributory causes. First of all, the pilots were not given up-to-date weather information and in particular information about the wind speed and direction. Secondly, the pilots failed to notice that the wind had changed direction and was a tailwind rather than a crosswind as they had been told. So they were landing at a higher speed than they should have been landing because the wind was behind the aircraft and, and pushing it along. And thirdly, the braking system did not deploy because it was under the impression that the aircraft was not on the ground. I'm going to focus on the software element of this accident and the fact that the braking system behaved exactly as it was supposed to do so. It's important to understand there were no bugs or errors in the software. The problem arose because the system specification did not take into account the particular landing conditions which arose in this case. This is an example of a situation where a reliable software system was unsafe. To explain what happened, we need to understand a little bit about aircraft braking. The initial braking in an aircraft depends on two things what are called spoilers, which are flaps on the wings, which are deployed to increase the air resistance and so slow down the aircraft. And so-called reverse thrust, where essentially you run the engine backwards, where, so that the, the effect of the engines is to push against rather than to reinforce the movement of the plane. Both of these slow the aircraft down to such an, until the brakes associated with the wheels on the aircraft can be deployed. It's very dangerous to deploy aircraft spoilers or reverse thrust whilst the aircraft is in the air. So the braking system has an inbuilt check to ensure that the aircraft is on the ground before these systems are deployed. In this case, the Indicators that the aircraft was on the ground were such that the braking system automatically blocked the pilot's commands to engage the braking mechanisms of the spoilers and reverse thrust. Now let's look and see exactly what happened and why this occurred. The key to safe deployment of aircraft braking is for the aircraft to be on the ground. And there are two checks that are carried out to ensure this is the case. The first of these is to check whether there is a weight on wheels. So the landing gear includes sensors which measure the, the compression on the landing struts and if these struts are compressed to a particular value that suggests that the weight of the aircraft is resting on the wheels and therefore the aircraft is on the ground. So one of the checks that's carried out is that there must be weight on both wheels for the aircraft to be in the ground. The other check is a wheel rotation check. The wheels will not rotate quickly unless the aircraft is on the ground. 
So there are wheel sensors which check its rotation speed and if the wheel is rotating at more than 72 knots then it's assumed that this is because it's going along the runway and therefore the aircraft is on the ground. The braking system deploys if either of these conditions are true. It's certainly possible to land, as we shall see shortly, on a single wheel. But the intention is that, or the assumption was rather, that it would never be the case that the aircraft was on the ground and both of these conditions were false. So the software includes a check like this. If the weight is on both wheels or either the left or the right wheel is turning, then the braking system deployment is allowed. In this case, the pilots were told that there was a crosswind, that is the wind was blowing across the runway. Under those conditions, the plane landed on a single wheel. There was not weight on both wheels. Furthermore, because of heavy rain and a build-up of, of water on the runway, the plane aquaplane, that is, it skidded along the runway rather than the wheels turning, so that indicator did not show that the plane was on the ground. The software, therefore, did not allow the brakes to be deployed. So what went wrong in this case? Why did this happen? It's standard procedure when landing in a crosswind to bank the aircraft slightly so that it lands on one wheel and the force of the wind pushes the other wheel down, as we can see from this diagram. This picture is an example of a, a larger plane landing under those circumstances, and you can see the, that one wheel is very slightly off the ground while the other one is on the ground. In the case of the Warsaw Airbus, the plane landed on, the plane landed on one wheel, but the wind had changed direction. Instead of being a crosswind, it was a tailwind. There was nothing to push the other wheel onto the ground. So for nine seconds, the plane was travelling along the runway on one wheel only. Because there was only weight on one of the wheels, the check that there was weight on both wheels suggested to the software that the plane was not on the ground. Unfortunately, the pilots did not notice that the wind direction had changed, nor did they notice that the tail, there was a tailwind rather than a crosswind, so that their speed was higher than normal. So therefore, they did not take any actions to counter this. The problem was made worse by aquaplaning. Aquaplaning is when a wheel slides along a film of water on a road or runway rather than turning, so it skids. It's not rotating as expected. In this case, the single wheel that was on the ground was actually aquaplaning, it was skidding. Although that was slowing the aircraft down a bit, it wasn't enough. But after nine seconds, sufficient time had elapsed, the other wheel came on the ground and then the braking system could be deployed. But it was too late to stop the aircraft by that point and the accident occurred. What can we say about this? Well, it's very hard to attribute blame to the designers of the software system. Um, there's so many complex conditions that can arise that it's practically impossible to take all of them into account. The designers of software have to take into account the likelihood that the pilots will be given correct information about the wind direction and they will pay attention to that information. You cannot, they cannot cope with every possible Thing that might go wrong. Of course, once you discover something, a problem like this one, you do take action and the software has been modified and to my knowledge there have been no subsequent accidents of the same type. But this whole thing illustrates that software reliability, software behaving as specified, is not the same as software safety. Accidents can occur even when the software is behaving in a reliable way. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.